All right, uh, welcome back. Yes, uh, we'll uh, kick off. we are taking a look at developments within the polity and then in rivers. So as you've seen there, we've got Mr. Tony Cole joining us this morning. He was the governorship candidate of the APC in rivers. Good morning. Thank you for coming on today. Good morning. How are you today? Yeah, well, well good. Thank you. Excellent. Hope you are good too yourself. I can't complain. Okay. So let's take a look at uh, scenarios. Um, well, you just came off, we just came off the elections, uh, governorship elections, most recently before, after the presidential, and you did participate in that. Perhaps I should start by asking you. So, considering all the build up, you, your party going into that elections, what did you expect going into the election in terms of your performance and everything? I think there were three things that were expected. The first aspect of it was that the beavers had been sold as a technology that will be a game changer. And so that brought a lot of people hope that there would be a change in the electoral outcomes in, in Nigeria. So that was the first one, uh, beavers technology. The second one was hope. And the third one was that we would have a violence-free election. So for me, going into this election, those were the things that we sold to, uh, to the populace. It's what brought hope, it's what brought a lot of people interested in uh, the election. And to an extent, all three hopes were dashed. Mm. The beavers did not work as it was sold to work. That then led to dashed hopes for a lot of people, which also then led to violence, especially in River State where I'm sure you know that we lost uh, uh, DG in one of the local governments. Uh, we know m t uh, two of my agents were directly killed, apart from the uh, DG. And so those, life lo those lives lost, uh, it's a stain to us. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's tough for any family to take uh, commiserations to that. But in terms of, uh, maybe we should start with the beavers and then the hope the reason why lots of people came out to actually vote was because they thought technology, uh, from the way they explained and the way they internalized it, was going to be a thing of huge implications. But there are those who also say there are advantages that the beavers conferred on us, that it wasn't all doom and gloom. For instance, they say that first look at the figures. Those days you had lots of people who fabricated figures, millions of votes here and there. But with the introduction of beavers, that is history. So do you consider that of any consequence? So to an extent, what you're, what you're talking about is the accreditation part of the beavers, yeah. which worked. And that's for everyone shows one thing. How, more, how many people actually come out to vote? How many people actually register? And so you have true data as far as that's concerned. And uh, for me, that's an advantage. But then when you take a look at the apathy, the number of people who actually did not come out to vote and why did not come out to vote in River State, then you know that there's a problem. And what happened in that instance was voter intimidation. People went out, they warned that anyone who is coming out, who is not coming out for PDP, would be killed, would be maimed, would be whipped. People were whipped and all of that. And that for me was a big stain. Should never have happened. So yes, Beavers in itself, brought out the true number of accredited voters that we have in Nigeria. And that is a good thing. It's a positive thing that we can build on. Um, prior to the beavers not working, no one believed that hijack of uh, polling units and entire uh, electoral staff was possible because we were told that the beavers also worked on geotechnology. And so if you moved it away from its polling booth, it will shut down, it will not upload. We found all of that to not be true. And uh, that, for me in particular, we built our campaign and we sold it on the fact that people's votes will count. And that was a big disappointment. Has there been any communication about uh, INEX performance? I mean, I know that they usually have these meetings with political parties before the elections, trying to find out what happens after the election. Do they expect people agree to go to tribunal and that settles it? Or do they have conversation in terms of what transpired, how do we improve it in terms of the performance of the commission themselves? And no, not yet. So all I think I said is go to court. And I think it's, um, it's a wave of a hand, a dismissal of something that is so fundamentally flawed. 
Yes, we will go to court. That is part of the process. But there was a fundamental truth that was sold. Uh, the uh, INEC chairman went to Chatham House. He sold this, and he sold it consistently. I went to Osho, I supervised the elections in Osho, I saw what Beavers did in Osho, and I saw the difference it made. And it was something that we believed. And I, there are INEC staff that believed it, there were politicians that believed it, there was the entire populace that believed it. And I think uh, Nigerians were conned at the end of the day. It wasn't, it just was such a disappointment. Well, some people might argue that, you know, it's, the, the technology wasn't the problem. It was the people who were handling the technology that was the problem, and perhaps the context in which the technology had to, had to work. Uh, I don't know if you know you have thought about this side of the argument, especially when you look at what happened when you talk about voter suppression, and there's nothing that the technology could have done there. Uh, when you talk about the fact that people didn't feel safe uh, to come out to vote, um, how the Beavers was not going to be able to work there as well. Uh, so for you, when you look at the context of conducting elections in River State, um, what other proposals do you think should be made so that, you know, people can feel safe enough to come out to vote and that at the end of the day that their votes will count? I 100% agree with you. Um, technology in itself is only as good as those who will administer it and those who will use it. So Beavers was sold as a game changer, and I agree with that aspect of it. Now, where did it fall short? It fell short in the human element that uh, transited from when the beaver stops to when the human element takes, uh, takes, uh, takes over. And from that point, there was a failure. So to answer your question, there was an experience in the February 25th election prior to the beavers not working. And you saw a dramatic change in how people behaved. People came out, people voted. Why? Because they had been sold this idea. So there was safety at that point. People actually believed and they came out and they came out en masse. What did you see from the point that it stopped working? You saw the human element, the rogue element come out and that's where everything went wrong. So what does this tell us moving forward? The first aspect of it is that people will believe and they will act accordingly in safety if the technology goes all the way to the end. What should the technology do? From this point forward, I believe that we need to move all the way to electronic voting complete. There's no need for the human element part of it because that's where it failed and that's where it was abused. Can we handle that? It was already there. If you remember, they had already done this technology and tested it and made sure it was working. It worked in Kenya. It was already working in Nigeria. So we had the technology. We knew what to do. But for some reason, at some point, it was determined that people may hack this, uh, Russia would hack it, all sorts of things. And so the political decision at that point was that don't take it all the way to the end. Let the human element control this aspect of it. And it failed woefully. So now we have learned You've had the hopes of many Nigerians dashed. There's very little celebration in any of the states about the results uh, that have come out. And you can see that there's a reason why. People are disappointed. People feel, they feel robbed. And so at this point in time, what we need to do, moving forward in elections, is just take it all the way to the end. And let's try that aspect of it and see if that would work. Mm. You have you know, admitted that the Beavers worked in terms of the accreditation process, that it was to transmit the results. So is it in the transmission? Because Rivers, I'm, I want to believe that River State is covered with, you know, at least 3G technology. I mean, 3G network coverage. So is it that... It did not transmit results to the result viewing portal or that the result viewing portal was down because that was the complaint for the presidential elections you know the ofi the the INEC officials were trying to upload the results not that the beavers had any problem but the site looked like it couldn't take those results they, there was it wasn't working uh so but in the governorship elections at least for a number of states we saw that the result viewing portal was up and we could see it being uploaded. I do not know what the particular experience was for results uploading in River State. Okay, so Rivers is very, very peculiar. <clears throat> what then happened in River State for the gubernatorial election, threefold, the first aspect of it was, it, it started with a build-up of intimidation. 
And so voters were intimidated. They were told not to come out. Whips were bought. People were whipped. Canes, uh, town criers went into communities saying that nobody should come out. If they came out, they would be dealt with and so on and so forth. So voter intimidation was very, very heavy. So that brought down the number of people coming out to vote because they were scared. The second aspect of it was that they discovered from the first instance that if you took the beavers away from the vicinity, it would still upload, it would still work. And so what that then did was that <clears throat> the kidnap or hijack of polling units, entire polling units happened as soon as the elections occurred, people had finished voting, in some cases before the counting of the votes uh, occurred. The police came, and this was shocking, because you had local government chairmen and councillors coming in their vans with the police and taking entire polling units away. And there was very little we could do. If we resisted that, then that would escalate violence and there was nothing uh, that we could do because they came armed and all of that and they carried them away, took them to unknown dis destinations and the next thing we saw was that these results were uploaded. So what you then saw was that because the voting did not occur electronically, and the polling units, the beavers were not disabled, as they said it would be disabled if you moved it from location. Results were uploaded. I, I don't know, uh, you know, I, I, I listen to INEC a lot. I know that the, the, the professor, Professor Mahmoud promised a lot of things, but I don't quite recall him saying that if you moved away, it won't be able to upload. Um, because I do remember that there, there are quite a number of places where, you know, when this, uh, this transmission thing came up in, the, in trying to, you know, fashion out the Electoral Act, there was huge debate. I'm sure you must have followed the controversy. Some people say, no, the network is not strong. Oh, in some places there'll be no network, etc. And the conversation was that, oh, even if there is no network, as long as the officials have started the upload, whenever it is they get to where there is network, it will automatically upload. So I, I, I know what I do know is that the, the names on the beavers were specific to, to a polling, polling unit. Correct. So there is no way you could take a beavers away from polling unit A and use it in polling unit B. You know. So perhaps do you think that... You know, we really understood the expectations that we had of the beavers uh, were, were clear enough versus what was promised. No, yeah. probably, probably not. And it was new technology to a lot of us, and so everybody was learning as they, as they went along. And as you learn, you have good elements and you have evil elements. You have the elements who will learn how to bypass and how to use how to use the faults, which is what we saw in River State. We saw that there was the bad element that took advantage of all of that. And the, the fact was that if we were going to resist what we saw coming, then it meant that we were just going to escalate violence. And we kind of knew that it was going to happen because we had heard it, it's a small political uh, environment, and so we knew that there were plans to kidnap. We saw people come into the polling units who were strange, and there was not enough security to counter that in any case because this was a global, it was a national election, security was widespread and all of that. We had choices, and one of the choices that we had was to also arm and equip our own uh, side equally. But the thought of that just meant that this was going to escalate into bloodshed, death and all, and we chose not to. Mm. But about some of the things that may have affected your performance, ultimately, uh, I mean, uh, quite a number of people, well, at least some, I don't know if I can put a figure to it, think that your campaign, the build-up to your campaign was affected because it appeared as though you were isolated at times. You couldn't galvanize because the court cases slowed you down. You couldn't galvanize a lot of support. Uh, probably they didn't see a lot of campaigns until the president-elect now uh, at the time came to reverse and then your campaign got some steam and that could have affected the momentum which you would have loved to see before time. Was that the case? No, I wouldn't, well, I wouldn't agree with that uh, ultimately. There were three things that we did in our campaign that we did very effectively. The first was that we did a door-to-door -door campaign, which was basically just going down to the grassroots and getting them energized and interested in coming into politics. And the reason why was this time around, we're telling them that we're there for them and that, we're, uh, that their votes would count. So these were things that we did door-to-door. 
the court cases are normal so we had 11 or so court cases that we needed to deal with and we dealt with all of them but particularly river state had some issues there were issues of executives that the uh, governor uh, governor wiki put against all political parties which meant that we could not use the normal rally points that we used uh, we used to use and so we had to find all sorts of innovative ways to campaign in the midst of all of that, we were shot at, bombs were thrown at, I was attacked several times, uh, our campaign was destroyed several times. And so there was an active uh, effort uh, by the PDP in the state to stop us from campaigning and to stop us from a uh, wide, widespread campaign. But that in itself also brought a lot of sympathy votes uh, towards us because people were just tired of the intimidation and they were tired of the frustration. Unfortunately, this continued all the way into the gubernatorial election because by the time we got there, a lot of the threats that we had on violence now began to kick in. And people, mm -hmm. people are worried about their safety. And okay. so they kept asking us, can you guarantee our safety if we came out? Can you guarantee our votes? Those were the mm -hmm. two things that concerned We'll talk about that security, but the, the, the part, because I think when he was asked, he said he didn't just give a blanket executive order that what they required was if people went in to use the hall, they just didn't have to pay for cleaning. And when that was done, they would always be allowed yeah. to use it. Was that the case? No, it wasn't the case. And, and that's, uh, that's uh, playing around with the truth. This was targeted at ensuring that no political party had the platform uh, to compete at the same level. And it was specifically targeted at, at us, but that's fine. We went through that, we survived it. Irrespective of what they did, we still campaign. Irrespective of how, uh, how the executive orders were targeted, we were still able to reach the people that mattered. And this, for me, was what, what was important. All right, my colleagues have questions for you from Lagos. Go ahead, guys. Yes, thank you, Chamberlain. Uh, Mr. Cole, perhaps you, you should be more categorical about your demands as far as the governorship elections in River State are concerned. I have read that you have rejected the results and uh, called for the cancellation. But are you saying that you won the election uh, and the process was flawed? Or are you saying that the process was flawed and didn't give a level playing field to all of the candidates to compete uh, favorably? So, so there are two things. The first aspect of it is that the election was flawed. The second aspect of it was that irrespective of the election being flawed, people still came out determined that they were going to cast their votes for us. Now, when it was obvious that it was moving in the direction that was favorable to us, we started seeing a lot of mutilations of our results. We saw a lot of cancellation of the results. And so the first thing we did was to say that the uh, electoral process needed to be canceled. And this was while collation was still going on. Now, collation was, has been done. A winner has been announced. And so now what we're doing is that we have to proceed to the tribunal, which is what we must do. And at the tribunal, we'll make our demands very, very clear to the tribunal as to what we want. Uh, but you know that besides, um, you know, uh, the, the flawed process, we've talked about the human element, but there's also the human element uh, at the level of the politicians. Uh, you know, uh, you, some have accused the governor of your state of disrupting the electoral process uh, to favor the APC presidential candidate, a thing that he has denied, by the way. But he has, in turn, also accused you and some other party uh, 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 party leaders of the All Progressives Congress in River State of working against the interests of your presidential candidate. Uh, so how do you weigh in on all of this? How do you respond to these accusations? Well, I don't know. That I don't, first, we're a party. We're APC. And we worked for our presidential candidate as a party. We, cannot, we, went, we never stood for anti-party activities. He, on the other hand, was very anti-party. <laughs> He's been antipathy to PDP, and he has been very openly curtain APC. But for us, we stood where we are, and we remain in APC, and we continue do doing that. So I've said uh, publicly as well that he needed to come in through the front door, not through the back door, if he wants to come in uh, to APC. But that's, uh, all that is in the past now. We move forward. Well, uh, let me ask you this. Is the APC in your state divided? No, absolutely not. 
Because there's this news making the rounds of Ofubara Dagogo, who is DG of APC State's Assembly Forum, congratulating the governor-elect of River State. We don't know him. You are not. Are you aware of this particular information? We don't know him. So first of all, APC has a register, and it has a register of active members who have paid their dues and belong to APC, both at the river state level and at the national level. Every politics starts at the ward, and you have your uh, registration at the at the ward. Anybody can get up and say that they are APC. They can call themselves anything. What we know is that we have a register of active members who are lodged at the national level, and we don't know we don't know this character. He's not recognized in the ward. Okay, well, we, there's also uh, that news that uh, at some point you congratulated the presidential candidate of your party, who is the president-elect. And uh, do you still hold on to that? Because there is news out there that you deleted the, the message you sent out congratulating him. Okay, so first of all, that post in itself and everything that went about that post was fake. So I wasn't the one that uh, designed that. They designed the post and they took it down. But that was part of the pol uh, political brinkmanship uh, that the PDP played at the time. But there was no point getting up to start accusing or denying at the time, so I just let it slide. Uh, soon after there, I was with the presidential candidate. He's somebody I've known for a very, very long time. I've known him uh, before politics, I've known him during politics, and I continue to relate with him at, at, a, at a friendly level. So I've never had a problem congratulating him, never had a problem associating with him. But where the issue is, is that within the political dynamics, that game was played. Somebody put up a post and took it down so that they can gain the political mileage that they wanted to gain. But that's all part of the politics at the time. Well, it's also well known to everyone that your presidential candidate, who is president-elect, uh, visited very, very few governors um, when he was campaigning. The part of the parties that he visited were members of the G5, an integrity group. One of them is the governor of your state, uh, Governor Wike, who was visited by uh, you know, the president-elect while he was campaigning. And it would seem like even at that time, the APC in River State kicked against that. Do you think that in any way contributed to your loss you know, during the election? Uh, well, if you, if you follow the political trajectory of what the president-elect president was doing at the time, uh, there were two things that were at play. The first aspect of it was that he was trying to encourage and make sure that River State money would not go to the PDP presidential candidate and in, in, in that instance, uh, foster the division that was already in the PDP so that he can enhance his uh, chances of winning within uh, the state. And so he did that. Within the political context in the state, it was understandable that he will cut that to ensure that he won River State by bringing votes from PDP and bringing votes from APC together. So that was understandable uh, at the time. And we had a discussion, I had a personal discussion with him regarding that, and I understood what was going on there. You couldn't fault it for the politics uh, that it was. However, to a lot of people uh, on the ground, at the ground level, there was some confusion as to where exactly all of this was leading to. Did it mean that Wiki was moving into APC or not moving into APC? Did it mean that he was uh, staying in PDP and playing anti-party? At the end of the day, when we were getting to the gubernatorial election, there was something he had said, which became a mantra in River State, was that he said, vote APC. And as a result of that, when he was coming to the gubernatorial election, everyone said they would vote APC. And it was that mantra that then led to a lot of the violence that we saw uh, coming out of River State. Mm. Now, how do you respond to those who say, like the governor of River State, that the River State is a PDP state and consequently it will be difficult, if not impossible, for any other political party to win in River State other than the PDP? 
I would have loved for that to have been tested without intimidation, without violence, and just allowed a free and fair election to hold. We have always said that the violence and the ability to rig has kept River State a PDP state since 1999. This time around, we know that people wanted to vote differently. And it was the fear of allowing a free and fair election that would have shown that River State was not a PDP state uh, that led to what we saw. When people are popular and they know that they have done well as a government, then they have nothing to fear and would have allowed a free election. This election in River State was fair for, far from free, far from fair. What we had was a hijacked election, and that was as a result of the fact that they knew they had not done well. River State is not a PDP state, it's just a hijacked PDP state. To what extent would you say that the rivalry uh, between former Governor Ruti Miyamichi and uh, current Governor, Governor Wiki, um, has, you know, will I say, fostered this atmosphere of acrimony in River State? Uh, to a large extent, and it's something that we're trying to move away from. River State and a lot of people in River State are fed up and tired of that acrimony, and people need to move on. And so one of the things that Ruti Miyamichi had done was just stay away from the uh, face of that politics and allow things to move forward. With every opportunity that Governor Wiki had, he had to bring it in. And this was not an election between Governor Wiki and Ruti Miyamichi. It was an election between myself and Sim. Sim never showed, Sim never spoke, Sim never came out, and it became a Wiki's third term. And so Wiki pushed this election, he continued to push the election, and he continues to push it even after uh, the election is over. I don't know that Sim has been interviewed, I don't know he has come out to tell us what he wants to do, I don't know that many people recognize him at all. But whatever the case, Amici's term was up, Wiki's term is up in, in, uh, on the 29th of May. But will they continue to try to make this about them? Would Wiki continue doing that? I'm sure he would. Mm. So moving forward, what was next for you? So first, the next immediate thing is that you go to the tribunal. My prayer, the tribunal is an interesting place. A lot of people are also very skeptical about whether the, the judiciary will do what the ju judiciary ought to do in terms like this. But we have to keep believing. So the first aspect is we will go to the tribunal. We'll see what the tribunal would bring. Should the tribunal do what I believe they would do? Because this was clear to everyone that everyone saw that elections in River State did not happen the way it ought to happen. Let's assume with the evidence that we produce, the election is overturned and then we get into government, all well and good. If on the other hand that does not happen, we continue. We're not going anywhere. This election, and for me in particular, I'd made a point that I was going into politics for the next 20 years, and I took that decision four years ago. And so here I am, I'm here to stay. We're not going anywhere. We'll continue to fight this until the right thing is done. I think Nigerian democracy needs change. It needs to be done properly. And we'll be fighting for that until we get it done. All right, then, uh, Mr. Tony Cole, governorship candidate of the APC in River State, thank you for talking to us, and we wish you all the best. Thank you. Good morning. All right, we will be back in just a moment. Stay with us.